of the um, of a, of a ta really of a task force that is um, put together was put together by the mayor, which encompasses the Economic Development, Housing, and Land Use Committee of the City Council and members uh, of the public. Um, let's go around and, and uh, say our names and uh, sort of uh, who we are. I'm the uh, city councilor from Ward 3, Owen Freeman Daniels. I'm Gene Casey, Ward 7. I'm Peter Fodham, I'm not a city councilor, I'm an architect. Julie Cowan, I'm a commercial lender and I live 0.6 miles away. Pamela Schwartz, Ward 4 City Councilor. Uh, Mary Casper, I used to work for Mary Ford when she was mayor and I was the arts coordinator for the city of Mary Casper. So thank you. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet at the at the lectern uh, for people who want to uh, speak in any in order. Once that sheet is exhausted, I am confident that there'll be more people wishing to speak. And uh, when you do come up, please speak. Please say your name and um, your where your, where your address. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to um, introduce the mayor of Northampton, the Honorable. David Jean Arkowitz to tell this, the um, community a little bit about the uh, process that we've been going on now for a few months. Please, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Um, uh, as you know, we've put together this uh, committee to try to um, study pre-development options and come up with some recommendations uh, for the mayor um, on, on how to proceed with the property. You may remember that in 2005, the city council voted to surplus the property um, and put certain conditions on it in terms of parking uh, and, and promoting economic development. There was one development attempt in 2006 which was not successful. Um, my goal is to now um, take a second look at the property um, and try to get as much public input as we can into that process. So working um, with the city council, uh, earlier this year we designated the site a um, priority development site, um, which is allows us access under state programs uh, to the services of mass development. And Beth Murphy is here from Mass Development. You probably know them as a develop as the master developer for Village Hill. One of the other things they do is they provide just basic economic development services as the state's economic development arm to cities and towns. And one of the things they're able to do is extend to cities and towns that have these priority development sites funding to be able to do um, pre-development studies. So <laughs> using that access to those funds uh, from Mass Development, we've been able to hire uh, uh, Util um, and Tim Love from Util, um, who is the city, who's going to be working with this committee and with the city, and he'll be presenting tonight. Um, Tim's one of the founding principals of Util. Um, uh, he's uh, a tenured associate professor at the North e Northeastern University School of Architecture, where he teaches housing, urban design, and architectural theory. Um, I, he's got a long resume here. Uh, so uh, recent and ongoing assignments include a redesign of City Hall Plaza for the Greening America's Capital Initiative of the US EPA HUD DOT Partnership for Sustainable Communities, a planning study for the Mill River District in New Haven, uh, planning for the New Market District in Boston, for the American Cities Coalition, uh, the Boston Harbor Islands Pavilion for the National Park Service, um, and, a, and a list of other uh, projects. So uh, we're really pleased to be able to work with Tim, and he's going to be facilitating uh, tonight's meeting on, with the committee. So Tim, uh, the floor is yours. And I, and I think the committee chair had one more yeah. comment just, I'd like to make a, a talk briefly about the process. Um, at normal city council meetings, people's public comment are uh, unidirectional and limited to three minutes. Uh, that will not be the case tonight. Um, if you speak uh, ad nauseum, we probably will cut you off, but there will also be, um, that you can also ask questions that aren't rhetorical, and uh, if the, any member of the ad hoc committee wants, or uh, Mr. Love wish to respond or are able to, they, they will. Um, this is also not the only meeting uh, that uh, this committee will uh, <coughs> that this committee will undertake. It's also not the only, probably not the only forum that we're going to have. Today's forum is to uh, put a public to, to so that the public can hear and see what Mr. Love presented to to this committee uh, last month, and for a broader public response, not just the committees that was that was given last month. Uh, so. This is an opportunity for the public to speak freely about their ideas. There will be others as well that are less focused 
on the um, preliminary uh, and, uh, and I think impressive uh, uh, proposals that uh, UTIL is, uh, is presenting tonight. Thanks. So, right. Is there a way we could half do the lights so people can see better? I don't know if there's a... Maybe the mayor knows. <laughs> can we get more air in here too? I've been doing my meeting so far because the mayor always reads uh, yeah. my uh, bio, which uh, is very rare when doing uh, okay. something I do yeah. public meetings, so that's pretty okay. awesome. Uh, uh, you know, some caveats about what we were hired to do. Um, we were at we, we were hired through our contract with Mass Development to look very closely at the Roundhouse site to see if there was a viable public-private development that was financeable that could happen within a three to five year period. So, uh, we weren't asked to do a larger plan of the, the downtown core or Main Street. We were uh, asked to see um, in the aftermath of the hotel proposal um, whether the market and your interests would, would overlap in a kind of happy Venn diagram of um, <laughs> public interest and public goods. So that's that was really our mandate, and um, and it was a, a nice problem to look at because we could run a couple of hypotheses to see if there was a sweet spot or not. So what I'm going to show you in a minute isn't a plan or a recommendation, but a sequence of scenarios we ran as we were seeking the sweet spot. So when you see the first scenario I show you, don't gasp, don't raise your hands, don't walk out, just be patient because they get better and better, okay? Um, I, I'm not going to uh, talk about the site at length because um, uh, all of you know better than I do, but it is, I think, um, a critical site in terms of how you think about the downtown moving forward because it um, is on the it, it's on the backside of all of those interests that are up like animals at the watering hole up at Main Street. It's where those interests drop off and things like solving for parking begin to happen but in ways that um, are positive in a relationship to the, to the residential neighborhoods behind. So it's in a, it's in a juicy spot. It's also along uh, one of the, the, the bike trails. We think that's a significant thing, too. There's some history I learned more about tonight before the meeting, um, about the history of the canal and the ra rail corridor we're going through. There's a significant wetlands back here. The former river was there, I learned. Um, so um, in my, my business, there's no more interesting project than these impossible, complex uh, 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 sites to look at. It's, um, it's the perfect site for an architecture studio and an architecture school. You know, it's got all of the, the working parts. Um, what, and here's the, the, um, the Hilton Garden proposal um, in all of its glory um, and the, the kind of backstory behind this proposal. Um, and so this was always both um, uh, the straw man for our investigation. Um, the, it provided the, the understanding of what where development could and couldn't happen. A little bit of the rules about um, what the parking needed to be in a new development or not if we decide to change those rules. So we looked at this proposal quite closely and the politics behind the process of this proposal. I think it's very important to reiterate that the whole reason I'm here is to do a different process than that. Okay, so. Um, don't look at that and look at me and think the development is all bad and that kind of thing. Um, the other thing that, that I want to be clear about is that we started our whole analysis by starting with Pulaski Park. Um, Pulaski Park is a very interesting place. It is a democratic space. Um, it is a place of free speech. In, in strange, interesting, unique local manifestations. Um, uh, it allows for all kinds of people to, um, uh, at all, of all lifestyles and socioeconomic places to happily be there. We're big believers in that, the idea of a kind of democratic park. Um, we also have been very interested in it, and, and, and this is, by the way, the original design for the current park, um, time with the bicentennial, believe it or not. Um, and then the series of community-led processes to look at the redesign. And I'm not going to go through 
go through each one in detail, um, but they share from one to the next a, a couple of basic principles. The kind of town green in the middle, a sorting out of pedestrian circulation on the sides. Um, they have to do generally with pedestrian desire lines and getting to the building that we're in now and making your way from South Street across to get to Main Street, X, Y, Z. Um, this is a slightly more formal version of that design. But in each case, there's a balance between path and place, an idea to make that town green as ample as possible, while having benches and kind of social spaces um, work off the pathway system. They, 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 they bear a, um, a family resemblance as these studies have gone on. Um, they, um, all of the studies, because they, until very recently, were anticipating the hotel coming, get a little bit less clear about what they want to do when they get to the hotel. It's kind of where, I like to, I like to say, where the dragons are in the map. Um, and so one of the things that we wanted to do is think about how a development, a development makes sense, could be a much more positive edge to that end of the park than just where the park isn't. And so I'll talk about that as an idea a little bit too. So um, uh, one version, the, the ellipse got rotated because there were other ideas about pedestrian flow being better. I don't know, I'm, I'm free associating based on the evidence of the plans. Um, um, uh, basic environmental consultants did a proposal. Again, the bones are the same. The open space got a little bit smaller. Um, this was, um, uh, and then finally, um, a plan that's been endorsed, which I think is, by the way, the most beautiful and the best of the bunch, um, is the proposal designed by Stephen Stinson, who's, a, who's an excellent landscape architect, by the way. But again, you see a little bit of a quandary about um, uh, uh, just below the path that connects to the annex uh, across the site, what to do with that real estate. Um, it becomes more a visual amenity and less of a place or, or part of a, the kind of public life of the park. Um, so uh, that uh, was one bit of evidence that we had that we discussed with a more informal group of citizens we met with very early in the process before we did anything. We wanted to get the backstory. We didn't want to come in and be naive and, you know, say, you know, so um, we had a series of meetings with uh, many of the people here in the room, and we got great advice, great feedback, a very sincere um, a kind of imperative about maybe <clears throat> what the park could be culturally and socially, and how a development could contribute to it. So um, uh, that was excellent feedback. And I, I will say that because um, we had we did a little bit of thinking at mass development about where the market's going to be in the next couple of years and where it isn't, that um, might not be a surprise to many of you that our initial hunch was that some mixed-use development that included housing was probably going to be, in terms of an RFP, if it happens over the next year or two, the most attractive thing for the development market. So we also beta tested the idea about more downtown housing, and we had a very nice, rich discussion about that as well, that it would be a good thing, but it should be the right kind, and balance of gentrification with affordability. We had all of those discussions. So, um, but we wanted to talk about some other ideas too about what could be on the park edge of a new development. You know, should it be a gallery cafe? Um, should it be um, just community space open to the community to use, a kind of meeting function room? Should it be a seasonal space that has glass garage doors that could open up that could be a farmer's market in uh, open in nice weather and enclosed for other, you know, three season uses. Um, we we had this. We, we brainstormed what what the edge should be of a new development to define and and, and, and frame the the back edge of the park. And that was again free association. We were just it's kind of twenty questions. Um, now um, what we decided to do is we had to start with an equation with a known number of variables. Um, is that we decided to start with the original rules of the uh, of, of the RFP back in the day when the Hilton Garden was chosen. And these were the baseline rules, which is um, we had to maintain 182 metered public spaces. Um, a deal had been made that um, the roundhouse is 22 parking spaces per their lease arrangement with the building, and those had to be also maintained. Um, and that we had to improve pedestrian connections between Pulaski Park and the parking lot. It was our feeling that um, uh, that the only, uh, as the only public benefit of this project 
that a true pedestrian connection was the only one, that it probably wasn't enough. That if the community was going to um, engage in a mildly traumatic process again, seek developer proposals, um, and uh, be at the whim a little bit of the market, that we had to build more public benefits into what the development might be. And um, those include, I think, a much more positive idea about what uses should face Pulaski Park, and even the geometry of a new building as it faces literally with a capital F Pulaski Park, instead of flinching away like I wish it wasn't there, like the last scheme. Um, create a, a building mass that complements the existing urban fabric. Was there a way to imagine a development proposal where a building or two that, that, that were put there would feel in terms of their scale, their height, their materiality, like the existing buildings on the block? Um, and lastly, could we, could we use this project, could we leverage this project to expand the, the, the bike ne network? One of our hunches is that we could use the, the parking of this project as a way to pay for getting um, a bike path from New South Street down to the bikeway. So you could literally come off that bridge and come straight down instead of going all the way around and down and around the back of the block um, to put infrastructure to work. So those were some additional demands we put on what we did. So what we did, and this was really the strange way to start but it's the, it's the tail that wags the dog of every single development project is that we started with parking. Because we knew we had to pay for 182 spaces plus 22, plus whatever parking spaces a developer would want. Um, and also we got the math right away, which is very satisfying. And we um, ended up saying between the existing parking lot and Pulaski Park, we can get existing spaces at grade we can get another parking level, and then we can get a deck on top of that that's at the same grade as Pulaski Park that we can put a new development on. Just mental image of that. So we were getting, in this footprint, double the parking that you would get if it was just a surface parking lot. So what we said is, and I'm sorry it's very hard to see back here, um, is that by making a parking garage that's the efficient 120 feet wide, 260 foot bays, which is how big parking comes in so it's efficient. And following the development build suit line of the last RFP, which is a, I would, I would to give the story away a little bit, of a kind of funny, arbitrary diagonal line, um, we get in access of the spaces we have to replace 36 new parking spaces. So we're on top of what we already had to provide, there's 36 left. And then we said as a what if, what if um, uh, 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 there were 36 new parking spaces per level? And so what we get as a scheme then is that we get 36 additional spaces, which yields a one parking space per residential unit. Again, we're just starting. Don't freak out. We get 36 units. Because the market has told us that even in progressive, multimodal, bike riding, transit-oriented New uh, Northampton, if you live in an apartment with your partner or your spouse or whomever, you have to have one car, or nobody's going to buy or rent an apartment. Um, and so, you know, I wish it was 0.7 like it is in many places where we work, but you're a, point, you're a 1 1.0 kind of place. <laughs> and um, uh, but, but we'll, you know, maybe by the time the RFP goes out, we'll be at 0.75 or something. And so what we did is we said, okay, what should a 36 unit project look like based on this very efficient parking deck. Because you don't want the parking space to be any more expensive than, than, than you don't want to pay for inefficient parking. So um, this is what the footprint looks like. Um, we put a 18-foot uh, a high, to be determined, community space facing the park. Um, that's actually double the floor to floor if you go to the full floor to floor of a typical housing unit. And then we have a floor above. And um, what's funny about the old development line is that it's at the bottom of the hill. So if you want to connect the park to um, the face of that, that community space that I mentioned, you've got to fill all of this earthen where it's uh, shaded and brown. Where that earth comes from is a little bit unclear. Um, it also is very funny because the geometry of the face of this building 
doesn't in any way face the park or respect the apartment building um, that's uh, to the left in the images of the apartment building. By the way, that's the uh, comparison of the footprint of the Hilton Garden and the garage to the footprint of the building that we're talking about. So uh, here's a kind of before and after. Um, we should have had the Stephen Simpson even in the, in the beginning, but it shows the desire lines through the existing park, pedestrians, and the idea that we have that we can also bring a bicycle path around down on the back side of the parking garage as one of the other public benefits of the project. Um, yeah, that's going to come up in a, in a um, yeah, that's, I think that's a good point. So this, this is the bike path coming down. What it does is it, uh, it's parallel to the parking ramp. Then it keeps going up, and, it, and it's all a 5% grade, gets up to New South Street. There's a three-dimensional image, I think, that will show it a little bit more clearly. So this is um, a rough massing model of what that development looks like. 36 units, small building. It's four floors on top of the deck. This is that uh, community space. Uh, each residential floor is 11 foot floor to floor, which at the level of planning is um, a good starting place for just looking at the dimensions of, of a project, which means this is a 44 foot high building. This is a 20 foot floor to floor, and blue is the community space that would be programmed through um, a discussion and a process. And I think the programming for that wouldn't be part of the developer's pro forma, but also part of the, the, the community benefit of the project. Um, that's the bicycle ramp coming down on the back side. Okay. So what you're seeing here is um, uh, parking at terra firma, no different than the, the grade of the existing parking lot, one additional deck, and then a deck on top that uh, uh, provides the landscaping for uh, the first scenario. Now there's a couple of things that, um, uh, again, this is the first one we tested that we didn't like. One is the garage is inefficient because it's got that diagonal. So the square foot cost of this garage is more than if you if you straightened out the, the parking deck. You get the net to gross for circulation of parking stalls in the group. I'm going to get more poetic in a minute. Let me bear, bear with the numbers for a second. Um, so the second scheme we tried squares off the parking garage. So the old uh, uh, project was along that edge. Um, that simple change generates um, the difference between 36 additional spaces and 62, just by straightening it out. That's how weird parking garages are. So we said, well, let's try 62 units, because that's, from an efficiency standpoint, the most residential units that can yield. Um, again, the scheme is otherwise the same. This is the parking ramp up to the second level. The bicycle path coming up. This is the second level now. This is the ground level of that uh, project. The community space faces the park now, uh, lining up almost perfectly with Stephen Simpson's paths as they come through the park, it kind of snaps into place. I think that what I would recommend if you decide to move ahead with a proposal like this is there would be coordination between the design of the park and that facade so that it worked as a kind of single piece. Um, and then this is the typical floor plan. It's a big L building, it's very efficient. This is, um, I have to say, in terms of efficiencies and floor plate, and a developer sweet spot for the developers in the, in the room. Um, if you're getting a decent number of units per floor for elevator and all those things. Um, and it also balances <coughs> the cut and fill. Um, which is much better from a land reclamation standpoint, and also in terms of just getting the balance of the park to feel better uh, beyond the path that, that comes to this building. That's the comparison. Da -da -da. Too big of a building. So the point here is that following the logic of parking, uh, of parking and the excess parking up to the number of units, you actually have to make quite a big building to um, uh, it's efficient, um, it would generate the most revenue of the schemes that you're going to see, but um, we decided and the committee concurred and um, the mayor too that this didn't feel right given the rest of the context. Um, a couple of problems. One is that it presents a, an out of scale facade to the existing surface parking lot which will stay. Um, and secondly, a, a through views from the apartment building are cut off by a relatively big building. But if I go back to the before and after, it is further away from the apartment building because it's an L that always steps away from that, but it's still 
as wall-like as the uh, original proposal. Uh, one, one thing, by the way, that, that we didn't have time to include in our model is um, the ideas we have for a new, a new broad stair that gets you up to the park. But that's, you know, we were just trying to get the development scenarios to work um, with this round of work. So this is the other side, um, really maxing out the number of units by even having the top floor set back a little bit. <coughs> so uh, with that thinking, um, we decided that uh, if we could break that building into two buildings, um, create a space in the middle that we might be able to balance uh, a scheme that maximizes revenue through the maximum number of units with a scheme that is more appropriate from an urban design standpoint. And so in this case, um, the parking is essentially the same. We lose spaces now because we have uh, two different elevator cores for the two buildings. So we don't have as, as much excess parking as we did in the, in the previous scheme. We get 45, I believe, 44 additional residential units. And in this case, there are um, two more kind of large house size like buildings that occupy that, that kind of landscape deck flush with glass part. Go through the plans, cut and fill, community space. And that's what these look like. Um, it steps from three stories to four facing the park. Um, there's nice view quarters through the presentation of the buildings and the facades we brought that it would there's no architecture yet. They're not going to be red buildings. Um, <laughs> um, but the, um, the, the, the variegated kind of elevation dimensions facing the parking lot are consistent with the short ends of the, the rest of the buildings on the block. It seems to have a better fit. Um, it's also interesting because um, it requires the space between the buildings to be brought into um, some logic about, about the public realm. Because the dark blue, the light blue that you see is the community space facing the park. The dark blue are the residential lobbies, the, the, the shared lobby spaces. So, um, so this building has its lobby around the corner from this community space facing to the courtyard. And people that live here walk on a path that extends all the way to the front door, dragged across the top of the, the landscape deck. So that's, um, that's that, we think that this is, um, for the scope of study that we did, um, which is not architecture, but conceptual design, this seems to be a good balance between um, meeting the, 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 replacing the existing parking, getting enough units that there's a development to do, and potentially enough cross subsidy to pay for the public parking space <coughs> and the bike ramp, more on that later, um, and a good starting place to start looking at architecture that might fill these in and be quite appropriate relative to the scale of the other buildings, um, both nearby and even along Main Street. So, um, one more scheme. Oh, yeah. How many floors are parking? Just two. Ground level, these all are predicated on a very simple idea that the parking lot stays, and there's one more level of deck. And then you have to deck on top of that to reclaim the real estate. Okay, so that's, that's constant across all of the schemes. Now, um, Somebody asks us, what about office? You know, why housing, housing, housing? There's a couple of problems. One is that office in this market requires at least two parking spaces per thousand gross square feet, which just means that it brings much more parking to the site than residential does. And I'll show you what, 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 what we mean by that, which is um, we're starting again with um, a very efficient parking lot. <coughs> Second level, but you actually need two thirds of a third level of parking to even generate a little office building that's only that big. So um, you might say, well, we don't really need office parking here in, in, in our city downtown, but they could financing for an office building you would. In other words, the requirements for parking are not just dictated by what we all think, but what the underwriters think is necessary when they underwrite uh, development financing. So um, it, 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 it seemed that um, uh, that, that seems like an awful lot of parking just to get a little piece of yellow that's office space. Okay. Um, somebody also asked in the committee meeting, what about hotel? And I think, you know, any of our residential massings work for an independent boutique hotel, but I think you all know that once um, a flag comes in with its standard 
prototype, um, the ability to be nimble like this from an urban design standpoint uh, uh, goes away. So um, unless, I mean, I, 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 so I, I could imagine an RFP that might include uh, uh, urban design guidelines, build to envelope, and um, you might allow residential or housing knowing that the only, the, I mean, uh, residential and hotel, but the only hotel that would come that would work would be an independent developer that had a um, more independent vision about how to do a hotel here. Um, but it would keep, you know, this kind of massing as a, let's say a building envelope would, would in a way help, help set the market for development. So I, I, a couple of caveats now. Um, let me go back to maybe we think the best of the schemes that we've studied so far. Um, mass development ran, has run some uh, financial pro formas. And the truth is that a rental residential project is marginal at best. Because the developer here has to internally subsidize the replacement parking that otherwise a developer wouldn't be financing. And so the city might say to the developer, come do this project and pay for all the replacement parking too, but that's expensive parking to replace because it's in the structured parking deck. Um, it's marginal. It probably means that um, uh, with some tweaking of the numbers and uh, some uh, aspirational ideas about the rents that these units might get, that the city might see you know, more than zero for the land. Now, that's not saying, by the way, that you're getting a community space facing the park, you're getting an extension of the bike network, maybe the key point where it makes sense, uh, you're getting housing downtown, which might be a good thing. Um, but those are the facts of, um, after doing the financial analysis, after doing this scheme, that uh, uh, the market's suggesting right now. If, if Conda is coming back, and, and there's indications that it might be, um, those numbers are prom more promising for a scheme like this, just because of uh, the way those kinds of projects are analyzed um, and financed. So um, even if everybody stood up and applauded and said, let's do this, um, we're not sure that the market will. So, um, so one of the things that we're doing now with the mayor and mass development is looking into uh, ways to uh, think about this as a public-private partnership, to have some public financing vehicle take some of the burden of the parking off the developer. Um, maybe not the burden of all uh, 182 plus 22 spaces, but maybe half of that, so that you're still making the developer pay for part of the replacement parking, to see if there's a way we can slide that back and forth, if there's a, a kind of happy place where um, some public subsidy might get the market to come and do a, a project that we <coughs> want. So, um, so I, I think to, to conclude then, um, and maybe you can tell by the way I've described these schemes, um, we can talk more about their urban design successes or not. But we always had an eye on viability, because you don't want to issue an RFP unless you have a hunch that the development guidelines, the program, the urban design aspirations of a project you put on the street will actually have people want to respond. And so that's also a political risk, too. So I think, is that good, Beth? Yeah. OK. Um, so we have been on the list. What's the protocol? Yes, thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, um, I, I know the entire, I speak for the entire uh, committee today. Thank you very much for that presentation. Uh, and uh, we'll now uh, accept um, public comment. It's starting with Jenny Fleming Eyes. You want me this way? To you guys? Yes, yes. Good. Um, I'm Jenny Fleming Eyes. I'm 15 Dryas Green. Um, or two. Um, I work downtown. I spend a lot of time downtown with my grandchildren. Um, overall, I would like to speak to you about keeping this project family and youth friendly, or at least having that perspective. Um, I understand the financial needs and the residential piece, but um, I would like to make sure that that community space is really something that we can all enjoy. Um, I'd like to specifically suggest 
something like a skating rink, ice skating, um, winter, and then something, uh, the same space in summer being used for summer theater and music events and things like that. Um, I've seen that done. Um, Camden, Maine has a small public sk skating rink that also sort of is used in, in summer for a theater in the park, and I think it works very well. Um, I was really pleased that you brought in Pulaski Park, because um, I think Pulaski Park, as much as it's um, a space for all people, is not particularly family friendly, and we have a lot of stroller people, I mean, i.e. baby stroller people around, which Pulaski Park is not particularly friendly for, so whatever we create, I'd like to really look at that park space so that it's, it's something that folks really want to use. Um, again, there was a, a place in Charlotte, North Carolina, where there's a downtown park that is surrounded by commercial real estate that is terrifically, I spent time there with one of my grandkids, and we went there every day, and it's a terrifically family-friendly youth kid place. So um, with all of the pieces that I know you're going to be putting together, I'd just like to you know, lift up that vision. Thank you. Can I clarify one thing? I mean, I, maybe just to be clear again, um, and I think the next drawing we need to do is to put the proposal for Pulaski Park, um, you know, the, the paths and the green, <coughs> in the same drawing. Because I, I think, again, our idea is that, is that blue space, whatever it is, is more about the programming of Pulaski Park than, than what's in the, the, the rest of the red. That it's, it, it's imagined as, um, imagine just, to be simple, it's, it's glass roll-up garage doors that could be open in the summer with, you know, a market and maybe close in the winter with a very skinny skating rink. I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> it's um, 3,200 square feet, I believe. 3,300. 3,300. The, the blue space is 3,300 square feet. Skinny one. Yeah. 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 Um, no, X to Y. It's probably... Um, 40 feet deep and however wide they believe that I can't remember exactly what it is. And that can be negotiated too as part of the process. You know, if, if I think one of the things that I talked about with that first group, the list that was on, you know, when we were brainstorming about what an active edge might be, is that an entrepreneur, a bizarro, adopter of that space might, <coughs> might might emerge early, a kind of the unofficial programming idea person of that space. Um, and even come up with a little business plan that might even get tied into the process. And I'm speaking a little bit recklessly, but I, you know, these spaces are always successful if a person takes them on. They, they tend to be a little bit less successful through committee, um, through Google Docs and that kind of thing, so <laughs> Google scheduling. So um, but those are the kinds of stuff, discussions we had about that blue space. It's not space for the residential development. Bruce Feinroth. Um, Chris Weinraub, I'm at 130 Coles Mill Road, been a resident of Northampton for many years. Speak louder. Please speak louder. Okay. Um, first, I'm surprised how the parking and the automobile is sort of controlling how this whole thing is playing out. I, I mean, I had no idea that that was, you know, the great thing. I had to work everything around the automobile. And that just seemed self-defeating for making a good, a good project and a good space. So I don't know if there's any that's cast in stone, and that you know, is in any way of changing the way that space, the plate, the areas envision to be developed outside of the automobile. Um, um, the other thing um, I wanted to, I had more other ideas. First, I think the land, you know, separate from the automobile, should be remain public, the public domain. I think it should be public land and outside um, private developers apartments and things like that. My idea was similar to the ice skating rink, um, which I thought of as well. And I'm going to read um, briefly a letter that I wrote to the editor back in January. Um, my idea is to keep the area in public, in public hands. I envision constructing an ice skating rink with a surrounding park area for the winter months. This would certainly attract locals and visitors and undoubtedly would bring business downtown and promote physical fitness as well. 
hockey leagues could flourish. During the warmer weather, the rink could be turned into an outdoor stage with amphitheater seating, seating on the hill leading up to Pulaski Park. Plays, concerts, dance performances, movies, and such space would bring people and business downtown as well. This would dovetail with the recent, recent movement to revitalize the arts in Northampton. The surrounding park area would provide a bucolic setting that would add to the attractiveness of downtown. I can visualize art installations as well. To make it green, both solar and wind energy sources could be utilized. This sounds expensive you know, during harsh economic times. Um, and, you know, I think this might be outlandish, but, you know, the Green Bay Packers football team are owned by the, is owned by the community, where people own shares, and um, that's how the football team is, is financed. You know, maybe the community could own the space, people could own shares, maybe you could get discounts to go to use the, the ice skating rink or the theater or, or whatever. Whatever is decided, there are two points that I'd like to make to, in ending. One, I think the land should be maintained um, in public hands. And two, whatever is decided, whatever plans are on the table, I think it should be um, open to a referendum by the public and not in um, sort of closed, closed doors. And um, since I think it's such an important, an important um, stage in the development, future development. David Drake. I uh, live at 321 Locust Street in Florence. I'm uh, speaking as an individual, but I'm chairman of the Historical Commission and uh, second longest serving member of the CPC. Um, and I was proud also to serve on the, the Community Advisory Board for uh, uh, Village Hill. Um, the, the river has been diverted from this site from uh, just about 73 years. For 80% of Northampton's history, 80% of Northampton's history, and certainly God knows long before that, the river ran right through the center of this spot. Um, so, in fact, the river was dammed and moved within the lifetime, probably, of some of the people within this room. And for, for good reason. But since that time, since it was moved, it's only been... Um, We've only been had to be thankful for that twice in those 73 years. So it is a um, the, the 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 damming, the moving of the river uh, was something that needed to be done in 1940, after the terrible hurricane of 38. Uh, but it was done in, with 1940 standards, with a kind of a heavy hand, uh, the complete elimination of any running water through the center of town, and. Uh, uh, we, we live with it, we take it for granted, but it doesn't have to be that way. Because it used to be a beautiful flowing riverway through the channel that you see there. And then later the railway was, was added alongside it. But it was, a, it was a wonderful feature of downtown Northampton for 80% for of uh, Northampton's life since 1654. The, when I heard that this meeting was going to be held to discuss the, the use of the prop of Pulaski Park and the design of the, the Roundhouse parking lot and perhaps also the Greenway extending up the old riverbed, I was delighted. And I'm, I'm still delighted. Um, and I also probably speak for a lot of people here to, uh, in saying that the, the building designs we've seen tonight are, are certainly far superior, uh, thankfully far superior than, than, than uh, the hotel that was being proposed. Um, but on the other hand, what I see is quickly moving into a discussion of, well, this building would be better than the hotel, so let's go in that direction. And when, in fact, we should probably be looking at a more comprehensive discussion, of, because we're looking at Pulaski Park, that whole park flat spot below where the, where the parking lot is now. And, and this is a fantastic time to be thinking about some way to incorporate some water features some extension of the river, not the, not moving the river back, but perhaps uh, in a controlled way, uh, in a controlled way, letting water re-enter uh, this area, um, and uh, while continuing to have the major channel uh, be where it is. So, 
If we are, in fact, looking at the possibility of having water, a bike path, uh, I've even heard some people talking about diversion of Route 66. Um, that means that the building or any building on there that gets done is going to have to incorporate a number of features and not simply, the concern is not simply going to be, how does this look to Pulaski Park? That's a major concern. But that we should, and I'm not talking about making this thing go too big. It should not, we're not talking about redoing the whole of downtown Northampton, but it should be comprehensive enough to include riverine, bike path, possible highway movement, um, uh, uh, features so that it's not simply how do we do something better than the Hilton Inn. Um, this, is, this is a time to look at, at, a, at a comprehensive site plan that will include the Greenway, include possible water, include, um, uh, yes, uh, whether there should be a, a new structure in there of this type uh, and size, uh, but let's not rush quite so directly into replacing Hilton Inn until we've kind of looked at that entire space because who knows where that should build, building should be facing. You know, if, if perhaps it should be more oriented towards a, a river um, uh, kind of a, a feature in there. Um, but it's, a, it, it's one of the prime, prime spots of Northampton and yet it's not, just by putting a building in there, we're not changing some of the features that we all dislike about it. I have colleagues who say, when I point out what we're talking about, they say, oh, yeah, I don't feel safe parking down there. Women. And this is Northampton. Women should not feel uncomfortable in this spot. This should, this should be a spot that is full of, full of life, full of development, uh, that, that is welcoming to everyone in the city. Uh, at virtually any hour of the day. So I'll close there. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. I'll just, I'll just um, some good points. I, I, I do think that if we decide to go to the next steps with the diagram, basically, from a financing standpoint that you presented, I completely agree that that it was very Pulaski part focused. And I, I think that that all edges of that would need to be studied in terms of it's, it's, it has many, many fronts on that site. I think it's a critical issue. So I'm glad you raised it. John Sinton. John? Well, I'll follow that up. Oh, there it is. Uh, I'm John Sinton. I live in Florence. I'm co-moderator of the Mill River Greenway Initiative, speaking of the Mill River. <coughs> um, the Mill River Greenway Initiative has just produced uh, a walking tour of the very site that we've been talking about here, which goes from Paradise Pond. Um, I'm John Sinton, I'm a co-moderator of the uh, Mill River Greenway, uh, and we have just produced a brochure of uh, the walk, of, of, of walking down where the river used to be, and the sites that are along the river and the historical maps that give you an idea of what was there, even the canal when that was there, uh, and the ra railroad and that sort of thing. The one thing I'd like to, and if you would like a copy of the brochure, uh, which is a self-guided tour, I'll be happy to give you uh, that. Uh, the one thing that I loved about Tim's uh, talk was that he talked about connections. And he was talking about and, uh, the connection from Pulaski Park to the new building. And the only thing that we're asking uh, at this point, I think, is to continue that connection down into the river, which then connects to the rest of the town, because that place down there, in fact, was a central point. It was the only place for about 200 years where you could cross the Mill River and get down into East Hampton, because Pleasant Street went out to a ferry, right? Uh, and right down that street and across South, uh, the, the old South Street Bridge, 
you would get down to the meadows. And the meadows started just about where the Gazette building is. Uh, and that was the connection that the town was making. So this, um, I think, can really pull us down where uh, uh, the town used to be and open it up for us. Thanks. Yeah, I, I think, by the way, this, the, I met John before yeah. this meeting, and the brochure is excellent. So if you don't have one, the great good is a synopsis of the history of the town. <coughs> And oh, I'd like to say also um, pedestrian and bicycle connections, by the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what makes the comment right? You just want a brochure. Oh. <laughs> yeah, me too. A couple of brochures back up. I assume my own. Oh, it's not a bad idea. Yeah, this would be the easiest outside. We'd be connected a little further down. They're quite loud. Do you have any motion outside? Sorry. I'm not sure. But they're connecting each other. So people that are spoken and it's carrying inside. Will someone in the back just tell the news to uh, push on? <laughs> oh, um, my name is Tris Metcalf. I'm an architect and founder of 142 Main Street. And I was part of a process called the Northampton Design Forum, which came out of the Hilton Garden Inn fiasco. The main point was to bring the public into this process of designing the center of our town. And I'm glad that's happening. Great, our mayor is asked to do that. It's wonderful. Um, I think I'm not going to reiterate too much of what's been said. I'll just quickly point on uh, some people talked about a, an ice skating rink. The third uh, place to park the time you looked at oh, quickly, that oval was to be a, an ice skating rink in the winter and a lawn in the summer. Uh, and also, what it had, which you didn't know was the fact that it had a connection of a bike path wheelchair ramp down from the park down to the parks that are down below. Um, I think that should continue. That, of course, was trying to deal with a, a very horrible site plan. That horrible site plan was the number one problem that created all the lawsuits. Lawsuits the paper hasn't even mentioned. Um, that the city lost a fair amount of money. In case he said, close to a half a million dollars we spent on that bad site plan. Now, that's not going to happen again, I hope. Doesn't seem like it. Great improvements in what we saw tonight here, uh, bringing the, the park connection around by the uh, apartment house. But I didn't see what the connection was at the roundhouse right here, yeah. who uh, incidentally won 22 parking spaces from the city because of that lawsuit. That's what those replacement spaces are for. Um, again, from a bad design, and we are not going to have that happen again, as I can see here, thankfully. I think that what this needs to be, I sent a PDF to a lot of people, I don't know if everybody in the room got it, called the Heart of Northampton, which came out of the Northampton Design Forum. The concept is that here's an opportunity where this could be the heart of Northampton in a way that will bring people to Northampton, bring people to the businesses, bring people to all of the surrounding, not just this site. I mean, we could just, you know, put a building on that site and suck as much money out as you can or can't and break even or whatever. What it needs to do is bring people to this town. And the way to do that is to bring the connections, which you said, this is great, to connect the park. The park should continue. It shouldn't just end at the blue commercial wall. It should continue on down and connect with <coughs> the new Mill River Park, that historic Mill River Park, which is a great project. Uh, Wayne Biden started way back when he first came in, which I hope he continues with. And John Sinton and David Drake mentioned, I think is a must that needs to happen in this town. Now, is it going to happen in this five-year program that you've been given? Obviously, a hard thing to do, even though you could get Army Corps of Engineer funding for the flood control it would be and all the economic development, creation of parks, improvement of the urbanism. I mean, it's, there's a lot of sources of funds that could probably hopefully do that. And then that river could continue on down, opening to the sky as much as possible. If you go into the Maplewood shops, you'll see a jungle down there. You'll see a jungle over the other side of what, where Route 66 belongs. Route 66 belongs where it was originally intended, connecting on a that level straight connection from the bottom of Hospital Hill or Village Hill straight to I-91 with a roundabout right here. So get rid of the traffic lights. Bring all the people through this place. This needs to be a place that has people from every form of transportation. 
from walking to bicycle to every kind of rolling wheel, a center like the great cities of the world where they have water in the center of a city where everybody comes to see and be seen, you know, like they've done in New York City in many places. Most recently, the High Line, where they created a, a, an unused railroad bed, which is what this is, and just it's a place where people want to be, just to see other people and be seen, and you know, it's it's, a, it's amazing, and that's what Northampton could use. Right now, we have very active interest in town, a lot of foot traffic up and down Main Street, mostly on one side, and it kind of ends there. It needs to connect. This foot traffic needs to connect all the way around through the Maplewood shops, potentially a future. West Street commercial area could happen when you get 66, which now dies right on the Smith College campus. At the worst intersection in town, it's the end of Route 66. It should just continue straight out to I-91 and all the other the routes. So what do we have? We have an opportunity to connect everything, bring back water. There could be a pond in that jungle across the road there. That pond, if you go to the, the website, which the people who got the email have probably seen some of them, um, that pond could be part of the river. Could, it could be an ice skating rink also or whatever. It's, it's just a water feature that becomes part of a park in the heart of town. And um, I just think that this process needs to get a little wider. Uh, you see great um, you know, thoughts on the, the presentation uh, given by... Uh, uh, Tim Love, and um, I just, this is the first meeting, this is great, let's hope it uh, ends up with, you know, really a better Northampton for all the economy, not just that property. Thank you. Yeah, I, I do think that, you know, we, we, uh, we, we, we have a, a, a clear mandate about seeing if there, you know, was any value here, in every sense of the word, right. on this site as a development parcel. But I completely agree, this is like a pebble in a pond. You know, the, the consequences of what this might mean for all the things that have come up tonight, um, that those forces can begin to act on um, what that might be, I, I think I think runs across all the comments that we've heard so far. You know, that, that this needs to be part of a, um, a much more tentacle-like set of issues that um, are about connections of all kinds. So uh, that's great. Brand Fulton. I'll follow suit here. Uh, my name is Fran Volkman. I've lived here for 50 years. Um, for those who aren't as old as I am, I am a former city councilor, former member of the planning board, former chair of the community preservation committee, and I love this city. And I think we have the one chance now to get it right. And I'm just delighted that you all are bringing the public in and moving forward in the way that you are. Um, since you're asking for suggestions, I, I have a couple. Um, I really like the basis of this plan. I, I just saw it for the first time tonight. Uh, I love the idea of extending the park over, uh, over the garage. Um, and I think you could go farther with it. I'd like to see... How much what Okay, so I take it this is the park. That's right. And um, and down here would be the river. That's right. Um, so why not put this building all the way back as far as you can and make it go all the way down to the lower level and have it front on the river. Yeah. So you have a, the lower level with the beautiful riverfront, and then the, the, the building can then come up more stories because it's starting further down. Uh, and then you open up a much larger place for the park to become a true town common, where there's plenty of room for the, for the ice skating rink and for, for uh, event, arts events and plays in the summertime. If you walk out on this deck, you, can, you have the most beautiful view of the Holyoke Range. This could be a wonderful public space, and you can still get the building and the river frontage at the far end of it. Thanks. Thank well, one, of the things, one of the things that makes me think of is that you can move that second building a little bit further back so 
that happiness to face to the landscape and the river at the back. Because you could take a floor off, and that would equal the floor on top, and then it would be down a floor. So I, I, I think it was a very nice idea. It also, I think, responds to the comment I made after the second speaker that um, I think this now needs to be studied from, from that, it's, that every face of it is, in a way, a, a front of some kind. And so I think that's in the spirit of that comment. Mm. <clears throat> that was all the people that signed up. So um, please uh, come up. Uh, uh, Yes, uh, well, raise your hands, I guess. Raise your hands, please. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, Just say your name, name and your address. Oh, my name is Maggie Leonard. I live at 50 Rust Ave. I've lived here for, I don't know, 25, no, 30 years, actually. It's going up. Could you put the slide up that has the, uh, the ortho of the city without any of the drawings on it? Way at the very beginning. Sure. And now you put the pointer sure. after you. Um, I'm a landscape designer builder, and I've worked with Tris and Gordy and Bob Reckman and a few others after the initial Northampton Design Forum, looking at this very site. It's such a great site, and, is, and like Fran says, this is so important to our community and the opportunity. So um, I'm really glad that we have the opportunity to give you input. Um, um, yeah, that's great. Uh, wait. One more. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, thank you. Okay, good. This is this is great. So one of the things that um, I'm really interested in, besides Plastic Park, which is here, uh, and the new building envelopes that you're talking about are right in here, I'm re I'm really interested in um, some of the things the other two gentlemen talked about in connecting Plastic Park and somehow making a connection down here to the river area. Whether it's the building pushback, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I have an opinion about Oops, I just screwed it up. Oops, help me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm really, I'm really excited because this is such a great project. So. But here, here's the thing. Um, we, we live here. We need to get from here yeah. down to this yeah. area. Yeah. So I was really sorry to see. So, I mean, I know about the parking thing. I'm a landscape architect. Right. I know about that. But I, I, I'm so sorry to see so much parking devoted over here. What would be great in the world of compromising is if we could somehow make a green cord or some way to get down right, here. Yeah. And then what's really important here is this is the river here, but then we already have a really beautiful boardwalk down here that connects to Pleasant Street. And there are little alcoves to sit out on. A lot of people sit there, and there's a place to look down in. Right now it's really standing water, and there are mosquitoes and cruddy stuff like that. But there's the beginning of something that would really be great if we could bring it from here and continue it up. And, oh, damn it. <laughs> the, arrow, the arrows are back and forth, and the red is the point. Okay. You know, I, I actually have a brain, but not today. So, so what's really... Well, that's, that's a good spot. That's good. I just got worried, worried. Okay, that's actually... So, here's, so now we've really switched this around. So here's the roundhouse right here. And we're up in here, and then here's um, coming into the Academy of Music. So this connection, right now, the old riverbed is under the old parking lot that's right by the brewery. What's really also a shame, and I realize we can't do that in this project, because these get really, really big and really expensive. But what would be great would be to think of these parking lots together as units and somehow move some of the parking over there, and or somehow make sure we can put some green in here just to suggest that there is a connection running from the bike path on Pleasant Street. So I'm kind of going along with you, Tris, but although I hate it when you raise the 66 thing, that always kind of gets me <laughs> But if we could somehow, if we could, and I'll finish up, if we could somehow take this green space, make a corridor down to this really beautiful corridor that runs along the bike path, that would be so terrific. And then I think the rest would follow. And yeah, I think, I think, I think, I think what, what's nice about your suggestion is that that face of the two-level parking deck that faces the piece of the parking lot that's going to remain. Um, the car axis is, 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 is at the extreme north end of that. So we could run a ramp or a, a kind of very shallow stair all along the face of that to make the connection that you're talking about, to really mm -hmm. make that green corridor. I, I need to go back now, unfortunately, to fly all the way to the other side of the show. Well, why don't we call somebody else and I'll get back to the point while we're 
So, yeah, um, after Jack, then you, then you in the back there. Uh, so, <laughs> I'm not touching that thing. Um, but yeah. can, you, can you bring it to the end of the last scheme? Yes. Uh, so, uh, I'm Jack Horner. I live at uh, 46 Lady Slipper Lane in Florence. Um, and I followed this project pretty intensely a number of years ago, and I've been involved with various stuff, Community Preservation Committee and State Hospital and so on. So, um, I got two or three <coughs> questions here. The first is, um, have the actual dimensions of the site been determined for the RFP, or is that something no, that's, that's a work in progress? That's a work in progress. It, 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 we know that the ideal width of the project is 120 feet, so we can get the parking to be as, as, as efficient as, and as inexpensive as possible. But at 120 feet in width actually yields a lot of flexibility on top for the different massing scenarios we showed. The, the depth of the site is still an open question. Um, I think we can keep it narrow to 120 feet if we have the tail run back to a point that is not interrupting the bike path or any of the cross circulation that's necessary now. So that's how we set it for now. And then we chose the location of 120 feet based on the lines of the, the Scott Stimson's park design so that the face of the building now here would tie into that design in a way that, that most rationalized the geometries of that. So we backed into the dimensions of the, of the development parcel, but that is okay. So, so then my next question is, um, there's all that parking to the left. Yes. So you've got two levels of parking. That's right. Okay. So if you're trying to create parking spaces, which I think are valuable for downtown, and if, as Tris says, you can have a scheme in the end that brings a lot of people, you know, they are going to lot and come in cars. So um, is there a reason not to put a second level of parking over there? We could, but um, the problem is that there's no way to, to finance a public garage in Massachusetts right now. <laughs> that's, that's the only wrinkle in your plan. <laughs> All right. Well, it's, um, it's a I mean, it, it, um, it, it's a very different time now than it, when it, when it, when, than it was when you financed the garage that I parked in, you know, this evening. And um, and I think part of the challenge is um, financing in general. That the cost of construction against aggressive parking re revenue projections is now at a point where the revenues never justify the financing of the capital cost of the garage. Because it still costs X amount an hour, but garages cost twice as much as they did in 1989. Um, and also, the state is um, being uh, is, is being stingier about what <coughs> municipalities will finance garages for. And um, let's just say that Springfield might be <coughs> higher on the list than Northampton. So are you saying that you'd like to push Put a building over no parking garage, a double garage, or you want to put the whole garage up? On well, I would, well, what I'm really thinking is you've got um, right. two levels of parking and some public space on top and right. some buildings on top, and then you yeah, and then the from the, from all that you're going to have a, a view of, the, of some right. one level yeah, parking. Maybe. So why not put a second level um, and maybe on top of that you could do something attractive? You, you want to right. cover another point that I should be clear about. This scheme provides no additional public parking. In other words, the, the, the benefit of the scheme is not more public parking. Because we need, uh, we, need to, we need to account for the roundhouse and the existing public parking, and then we need to generate some excess parking development. So just in case people weren't clear about that. Yeah. And, oh, let me just one, one last quick comment, um, which I think to some degree, uh, at least in this um, scheme you, you've done. One of the problems with the, with, with the hotel was that the footprint was very close uh, to the building on South Street, right. mm -hmm. um, which a lot of us in this room worked very hard uh, to create um, as some good housing. And so um, I just want to say um, that the folks in that building uh, need to have people considering you know, their lives, their view mm -hmm. from the building. And so, for gosh sakes, whatever we do, I mean, I can see there's a lot more open space, uh, certainly in the middle of that building, but as we get toward the right end, 
I'm wondering what the view is like that. So I'm just right. trying to advocate a little to say that was I for me that was a big problem before, right. and let's try not to create that yeah. problem again. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think some of the other suggestions tonight, for example, moving the um, northern of the two buildings a little bit further to the north, so it drops down the face of the garage to open up that space even more. So. You know, some of the suggestions are pointing in the same direction. Mr. Beckett, I'm just going to get people who haven't, unless it's okay. a quick comment. I just wanted to have loud. It's okay. Um, yeah, my name is Kevin Crowback. I'm an architect also. <laughs> Good bad. Um, I also live at 74 Ice Pond. I'm a resident of Northampton, obviously. Um, I run Justin Pope Frazier, the architects for the uh, fire station and the senior center in town. Um, I think that one thing that I would like to see come out of this is not only this specific site, but looking at just the potential for development in downtown Northampton. I think we've got, we've got to understand parking. We've got to understand parking lots as a source of tax revenue. I was kind of astonished that nobody's mentioned tax revenue from, from this particular lot. What is the, what's the advantage if we're, if we're building something on what's strictly the sole public space, the town common, so to speak, What's the advantage to the town here? What's the tax revenue out of this? Why aren't we just looking at a source of revenue here, not just talking about, you know, creating a public-private partnership? You know, what's what's the numbers? What's the advantage to the town from a tax point of view? I guess would be my question. You're the first to raise the question, Mr. Bukovic. I know you were. Then I thought maybe we could form. Yeah, one. if you if you want to speak, please. Uh, I, I'm going to be obviously. I'm going to be calling on people as I see them, so please come in line. But I know I, I called on you, Mr. Rubovich. Is the mayor getting in line? <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm Ian Vukovic. I live at 35 New South Street, uh, basically across the street from where this project is. I um, walk through the park uh, multiple times every single day. Um, I guess my appeasement here is to keep it simple, keep it open space. Um, I love the proposal of the park and garage with the extension of the park. The um, obvious question is the tax revenue. And I would say that this is kind of the city space and the town space. And the park getting a revamp with an extension uh, would be a great uh, refresher for that for a space that's been dull for quite some time. Um, I would say the incremental, well, we don't know the number of the, the tax base increase that we would see here. The incremental gain to the city overall it is just not there for the space that it is. Right? It is in the heart of our town. And my, my personal feeling is keep it simple, keep the project Clean. Um, and I mean, I'm hearing things like extending Route 66 for the first time, bringing the river through town for the per first time in you know 75 years, and I'm in the back with my head spinning. It's like let's just not try to do too much, right? The 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 future of this town does not depend on this project. It's a great town. It's going to be here for years to come, and I, I don't think it's all the eggs in one basket. So, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Hi, uh, my name is Mary Ford. I live at 6 Massasoit Street uh, for eight years in the 90s. I was the mayor, and at that time, according to zoning laws, um, there couldn't have been any development and, uh, of, in this area. And in fact, I won't replay the whole debate that Wayne and I had in the pages of the local newspaper. I don't know whether you've seen that. <laughs> But um, I remember when the zoning was changed and also when the grant was put in to determine what toxics were underground, on both occasions I expressed my strong feeling that uh, the best use of that area was what was there now. Um, so having said that, I too, like Fran, um, like uh, some of the concepts that have come out here. Uh, the idea of encouraging more development closer to downtown, the infill idea, is supposed to keep us from putting resources into sprawl that put human habitation into conflict with uh, the environment. And um, in fact, I think housing is probably right now the only demand thing uh, that otherwise uh, I, I, th this should apply to. Uh, we really didn't have people demanding to put 
hotels all around, you know, like in Leeds and so on. Um, so the idea of concentrating, moving the development inward, I think um, housing makes the most sense. Um, let me go on record again as saying it's, it's hard being a planner. It's kind of like being a politician. You have wonderful visions for things. Um, and some of our architect and, and uh, um, environmental planners likewise. But you, your tools mainly involve restrictions. You don't have investment capability for the most part. Um, so Wayne did convince me to sign the zone change and to sign the application for the underground work to be done. And uh, my belief was that if toxics were found in any great quantity, we would just repave. And that would be the, the best thing to do. But being where we are now, um, there's a couple of uh, things. There's a bunch of potential users um, already there. I'm glad that several people mentioned the apartment building along New South Street. A lot of public money, state and federal money, was used to subsidize that development appropriate for historical standards. And if we want families with children to choose that building to live in, I don't know, is anyone here from Valley CDC? Yeah. Um, oh, yes. hi. Um, th there really needs to be not just, you know, don't block off their air, but that, that building was built in a time when people used their back porches as their uh, cross-community uh, thoroughfare. And that's uh, because it's built right up against the sidewalk on New South Street. You can't stop on New South Street and carry in your groceries. Your kids can't go out the front door to go to a place to play. Technically, legally, we aren't obligated to do anything with the old parking down below to help those people. But it's quite clear as a practical matter they use the overnight housing for free. That was a, a past practice that I think should be allowed to go forward. But I really want to stress that as much green space as we can put on that side would be welcome. I don't know if anyone has interviewed people who live in the senior high rises that are nearby. They would be one of the biggest users if we find uh, a ramp system of some sort, whether or not it's connected to the bike path, to get from down below to up to the Main Street level, um, I, I would consult with them. And I've always felt that you could do a pretty simple terracing down that sloping back uh, area behind Pulaski Park, you know, with an S-shaped ramp that would be beneficial to plenty of us walkers. Uh, as well as uh, people with actual handicaps. So I would throw that in there. Um, basically, I would, you know, uh, I would not have the big tarmac parking section stay where it is. I, I would put, um, is, is there a pointer that works? Yeah, yeah the, the, the red button is okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, well, it's, it's harder to show here. Can you go back to the other one? You've got the other one. Ah, thank you. I, I would put your, your two buildings connected by a, a terrace here and here, and all around have some kind of integration of parking and walking space. I don't know what the data are, but from my personal experience, a lot, I've, and I've used the bike paths from Amherst through Hadley and spend a lot of time on the East Hampton bike path as well as the Northampton one. Walkers are a major user group, not just bicycles. So even if we can't do a complete connection to a bike path, um, we we could uh, tackle that in, in some way. And just in general, I would urge, for me it's not so much about the specifics, but um, one of the first things in government is, you know, 
what they tell the doctors. First, do no harm. Um, it was one of the things that was most upsetting about the last proposal. We have such beautiful historical architecture. Or, okay, Northampton's Gothic towers aren't really beautiful, but, <laughs> but they're <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, between them and the Academy of Music and uh, the church building and, and uh, Memorial Hall, and then the other scattering, even the people who, who did the first roundhouse redevelopment um, next to the roundhouse, they got historical money by making it look historical, even though it was virtually all new. Um, let's try to keep to that kind of thing, and let's try to keep the massing small. Um, and I do want to say with reference to the river, one of the biggest reasons to put a parking deck under whatever building that's there the is so issues. that the water can flow and, the environmental issues too. and flow through. Thank you. So um, that's and and leave room for people's behavior to for serendipity to happen. Pulaski Park gets used a lot right now by all different kinds of people, even without us renewing a plan. I think if there was encouragement for safe and green transportation and hanging out um, along with whatever kind of building and trying to preserve the viewscapes um, that, it, that it could be integrated uh, nicely. So, thanks. Yeah, but I think that um, the do no harm comment, I think if through the next step of this process is a decision to issue an RFP, um, we're going to recommend to the committee and the mayor, that there be fairly prescriptive <coughs> development guidelines to say that we roughly want this development. It's not, we, we can't leave to the market to make the right decisions. And I think mm -hmm. that was one of the lessons of the last RFT process, that will allow a little bit of freedom within a, a, a development envelope for a little bit of creative thinking around floor plans, but I think the principle will be captured in a built-to envelope so that um, all of this hard work that we're doing, if we get to a place where happiness reigns, you know, um, we'll be very clear to the development community, these are the rules from a massing standpoint, even from a material quality standpoint. So um, I think that, that, that all of the things that were just said um, are going to be part of how we instruct the development community, how they respond um, um, to this process. Hi, I'm Joel Russell, um, and I was involved in this project. <coughs> In, in various ways over the years. Um, I, I'm an urban planner and land use attorney by background, and just a few basic principles. I'll, I'll try to keep it brief, because I know a, a lot of people have been here a while. Um, a, a couple of unique features about this site. It, unlike most downtown sites, it actually has three fronts and one side. Um, and, and so those fronts, and they each serve a different function. One of them is the front that is the back of Pulaski Park. One of them is the front that right now, or even as shown in that diagram, is just facing out on a blank parking lot. And that could be a street, or that could become a street, and whatever that, what, what that parking lot could become another block at some point right. that has structured parking. So I think we should be looking ahead to the possibility of that um, being a, a more meaningful space than is shown there. And the other front, is the front that faces the river. Um, and that could be a street as well. And the side that faces the apartment building is the apartment building's backyard. And so that has to be designed keeping in mind that consideration. And I think if, if you look at it that way, um, that helps to sh shape the design concept. Um, also, <clears throat> the whole idea here, I think, should be buildings shaping public spaces. And proportions are important. So I think there's probably a consensus that we want Pulaski Park to become a town green. And there is a question of what's the right size for that. Um, and for a town, for a city the size of Northampton, it might not be the same as the Boston Common, because that's a different kind of city. So um, I think the idea of moving the building back some to make the park a little bigger makes sense if we really look at the proportions. But I'm not sure about that. I think it, it's definitely worth studying. Uh, a couple things that haven't been mentioned or been mentioned only briefly. Um, the tax revenue question is important. This 
is a city like every city in the state and in the country that's really strapped for money for reasons that are beyond its control. Um, so adding tax rateables is important, I think, and this is an ideal site for housing. Um, and, and I'm glad you brought that up at the beginning. And, uh, but I don't think it's been said enough that downtown housing is the thing people want. The studies of markets, the studies of, ur of new, the newer urban places show that people don't want to live in the suburbs in nearly the numbers they used to. They want to be living downtown. So, and it should be a mix of market rate affordable. And that has another impact that hasn't been mentioned, which is the business community. I haven't heard anybody say anything about enlivening downtown business. We have some severely underutilized spaces downtown, which would benefit greatly, particularly the retail, from having a customer base that's living downtown. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I think having, uh, putting a significant amount of housing into that space, as, <coughs> as you showed, I think is a great idea. And just finally, I want to thank everybody because this is the kind of open process that we need to have, and uh, I'm glad we're having it. Ideally, we'd have a two-day charrette, and really, you know, everybody who's here could jump in and, and do more. Um, but this is a great start, and um, I encourage you to just keep going along with it. I think also considering 45, 40, 44 to 45 additional households, right at Pulaski Park, what it means even in terms of civic engagement. I mean, these are going to be the most engaged, you know, citizens politically. Um, the, the, you know, it, it, imagine 45, well, 45 more households here um, um, who are going to be right at the front door to a lot of the decisions. But I, I think that's a positive thing for a downtown to, um, in a way, generate your own stakeholders, right, um, who are vested in the downtown. So. In addition to the tax revenue and, and potential customers, I think 44 households is not insignificant. That's a pretty big subdivision, right? Yeah. Oh. Uh, my name is Lois Aarons. I live in Ward 1. And um, I, I came here, I was one of the many that was uh, opposed to the Colton Garden. And uh, so I came just to hear what was going on. And, I'm, I'm surprised um, that that what's being presented is a building or two buildings because I thought this was still like sort of an open process. Um, and so seeing that what we're talking about is buildings and parking garages and all of that, I'm surprised that, that that's what's being presented here. But the other thing, if, if we are talking about a building or buildings and housing, um, I, ha I haven't seen, I, I saw the little thing on the side about how many different uh, apartments there would be and blah, blah, blah. Right. But the thing that I didn't see is um, who, who these are designed for. Um, are they co-ops? Are they, um, are they uh, apartments that have cost $2,000 to rent? Or is there, are we talking about that one affordable housing block that may be blocked, uh, but are there, are there any other affordable housing units built into this plan? I mean, I personally would hate to see uh, two buildings go up in the center of Northampton, and the thing that's desirable about them is that they're stocked with more consumers for downtown businesses. I'm all for downtown businesses, but I think that we need more diversity, right. economic diversity in the town, and more and more people are being pushed out of the town. And so to have another set of buildings being built for one specific population, I think is um, really unfortunate if um, a bigger mix of uh, who might be included is not thought about right from the get-go. Yeah, and I don't hear that in the get-go. I want to be clear again that our, you know, our scope of work was to see if there could be a real estate development proposal here that in advance of going after an RFP, both seem to be headed in the direction that might be acceptable from an urban design standpoint and would be economically viable. We weren't asked to do a plan or do a visioning exercise. It was just to see if private development could be a, a, 
part of the mix of revitalizing a part of the site. That was really, it started with a, a much more humble question that we were asked to look at by mass development. So I think but you're But if you're building housing in the center of town, I think affordable housing right. needs to be part of that mix. Yeah, that might be a decision that the community makes as another public benefit that, that has to be subsidized for the development itself. Right. And or there's a, a CDC nonprofit <coughs> for-profit development deal where other subsidies come into play from other, from other sources. And I, I think that that, that the basic issue, I think, for all of you is um, there's two places to, to finance a vision. One is public monies, and um, we know the current political climate right now. Um, yeah. Today's probably the worst thing to talk about that in the history of the republic. Um, and then there is the way that we leverage creatively private development to internally subsidize public benefits, which developer also perceive to be a benefit for marketing and making their financing work too. So there are certain things like a, like a public space, a new bicycle connection, um, rolled garage doors in a farmer's market that's both good for all of you and also part of the story of the brochure. And so these tend to be in the um, get your hands dirty of public-private development, those things that seem to um, seem to be kind of win-wins in terms of a community deciding whether to allow development to go ahead or not. And this is either through zoning variances in Boston, these are deals that are done, or just you allowing this to be sold as a piece of land. Um, you might decide, no, 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 affordable housing is a priority. That might mean that you can't afford to do the bicycle ramp, or you can't afford to do the public space, these are all public benefit choices, but at a certain point, if you layer too many on, there isn't enough private development to finance them unless there are third party public agency or foundation sources to supplement them. So it's right. a, it's a I, I, I'm, not, so I'm not saying I agree with you, but I, I think that there's gonna have to be some very careful thinking about how much can we burden on a private development before the mayor's got to get super creative in the state to say, there isn't much money around, but I have this one idea about a, a, a source that we could find that maybe you can pay for that, for X or Y. And so it's how we package a financing strategy against the desires that becomes the real issue here. Um, right, I could just say one thing. I, I agree, I understand what you're saying, but what I'm saying is we've heard about the roll-up windows right. and the farmer's market and the space, right. you know, I mean, all of that kind of stuff is being part of what's being presented now as part of the mix. Right. And the thing that we haven't heard about. The affordable housing. Yes. Right. Can so I think it, that's all. Is yeah. there anything of the, uh, excuse me, are there any other comments you want to add? No. Yeah. And I, I agree. I, just wanted, I wanted to, I mean, I, I think what's going to be very difficult about this process is to understand <laughs> that that our mandate is actually to worry about how to pay for it. <laughs> it's not to just have a charrette, but to, you know, Mass Dev and the mayor are like, we need a path forward that we can actually do. Or we say, no, no, time out, we need some patience. You know, given the current economic climate and, and funding sources and the state's priority list about parking garages, let's take a time out for 10 years and come back in 10 years when the world's changed again, hopefully. And we won't, we won't get back to the Johnson administration, but you know there might be <laughs> other things that happen that maybe means it's worth taking a time out for a second. Like this, actually, uh, <coughs> Lesco Forty Valley Street, which is Ward Three. So, well, I really like the idea that you're talking about a community space because we've been trying to get this for some 30 years in Northampton. But I agree with people who said it should be public space. And I don't, I think this idea that you've come forward already with a proposal for a building is unsettling. And the idea, well, first of all, you know, there's been, we just had a zoning debate in Northampton and passed new zoning, which is to encourage infill. So all the neighborhoods downtown now are, almost all the neighborhoods, are going to have the possibility to have more housing in them. So I think I take a little bit of umbrage with this idea that you'll have 45 residents, which will be the most involved people. I mean, essentially, if there isn't housing for people who could afford to, who want to be in town, children of, as the, the firefighter said, I want my son to be able to buy a house here. If he can't live down there, then you're going to get people moving into this downtown thing 
who come retire from New York or Boston or whatever, and maybe they'll be involved. But the truth is we have already an involved population here, and we're living all over downtown. And so I think to try to get, you know, there's a lot of housing all around. We have Old South Street Common. We got rid of that public space, and now there are people there. I don't know if they're more involved than usual. They haven't been good neighbors to the Center for the Arts, but you know there are people who have problems here. And, and so I, my question is, I would say, you know, I love the skating rink. I like not putting a building. I like the river park. I would say, yes, take a breather. Why put all this energy into this development? You know, we're getting a new hotel on Con Street. We're about to hopefully experience like some infill, like encourage infill in the city. And we will have more housing. Let's just step back from this and not push it because it's frightening to me. There's too many things proposing to go in that I don't necessarily think make any sense. And the idea is that as Bruce Weinrob said at the beginning of the whole thing emerging around parking and cars is very frightening. He's a truth teller. Thanks. <laughs> uh, sir? My name is Tom Kegelman. I'm with Home City Housing. And because of a recent transaction with our friends at Valley CDC, we are now the proud owners of that apartment building in New South Street. And uh, we are, we're very interested in what happens here, and we're going to be continuing to participate. And um, I you know, appreciate the concern that's been expressed over the, um, the people who will live there, uh, some of them quite low and whose uh, views are going to be severely you know, restricted as a result of any kind of building there. But um, I, I want to thank Jack and Mary for putting in a plug for those people and uh, we're going to keep them informed of this process and make sure that uh, they know what's going to happen here. Um, I'm also a developer. And um, everything you said about trying to balance all of the public benefits and the costs, <coughs> where do you get the money? I've been on that side many times, in this room, in fact. Um, and I, you know, I got to say that, uh, you know, as a planner, as a developer, as a housing developer, um, you know, everything you said makes perfect sense, and the math is, is exactly as you said, and the public resources are what you said, and you know, all of that. Um, but I love the energy in the room and the, and the idea, let's just blow it open. Let's look at some of this stuff. And there's some very poor communities. Detroit is one example of what's happening in those downtowns, in those uh, very depressed urban areas where there is no public money and the kinds of exciting things. In fact, Detroit is one of the places that, you know, that famous ice rink that they uh, developed downtown has just been uh, a huge boom. So it's not that outlandish to think about something like that. And, uh, I just like the idea that um, we're opening it up and, and thinking about it. So I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Hi, I'm Robert Ross, and I live in, uh, on 40 High Street, Florence, Mass. I was the uh, past president of the Florence Civic and Business Association. I'm on the Economic Development Committee, I believe. The city of Northampton, and sure. wore a few other hats. Um, and I'm, I like to think of myself as a progressive thinker, but I think I'm going to have to echo what Claudia said. That um, I think it's, this is something we could leave alone for a little bit. Um, I think the economic climate isn't right or correct for this scale of a project. Um, I think a person that might buy a property here is going to be an intelligent thinker, and they might not think about, might want, want to buy a property, an apartment, as well as do it over for questionable site, and there might be a tough sale, might be a tough sale for a developer also. With a hotel unit, it might work better because you have less uh, human impact <coughs> with the uh, site itself because you're coming and going, you're not living in a single basis. So I really think it might be a tough sale. Um, and I'd like to think more, uh, I like to think about the public in the city of Northampton, and this is an agrar agrarian society, and it's shameful that we don't have a real uh, town common, a real green space in there downtown Northampton. Um, I think this would be a great opportunity if anything to expand the green space of Plastic Park beyond. Eliminate the building. Of course, this won't work in today's uh, economic climate, but I would love to see a two-deck parking garage there. 
and the park can do enough to hold the whole deck level. And I'd like to see that as an entertainment space, an outdoor venue that would enhance what we already have in our downtown area. Instead of putting all our putting it all into this one little building that's not really it's gonna be seventy two people, maybe hundred people max. It's really not gonna change the demographics of downtown Northampton greatly, but a park there that really was a huge jewel in the center of Northampton that would help uh, the Academy of Music, the DA Sullivan building, that would bring right, bring a park onto Main Street that would actually make it a place where people wanted to go and congregate to enhance the properties that were already in downtown Northampton. And the tax increase would be the benefits of the buildings around that would actually be better built. More improved, have more vibrancy than they have now. But the DA Sullivan School building has, you know, has an occupancy problem. Because other buildings with occupancy problems downtown Northampton. So I really don't think putting another little building on this little piece of land is really going to help anything at this point in time. But I really would think it would be sad to give up this piece of land. It could be a great uh, benefit to the city of Northampton. But one comment about that is that the, the, the Pulaski Park redesign that would be implemented relatively soon is going to make a, a poorly used space seem much larger than it is now. And I, I, I would only recommend that you build a new park where there are many more programming opportunities than now. See if that's at a capacity you can do the things that you're talking about before you decide if you need a larger park. Right. Or not. So I think that park is going to be. Um, is going to provide a lot of programming opportunities, even at the scale that you were talking about. But the blue box extension, that part of the park, it's just a duplicity of what's already in Northampton already. We already have two farms. We already have our performance space. Um, so it's not something we really need. We seem to have a great way of recreating the same thing over and over again in Northampton. Instead of doing something new, which I think would be great to see a new and bigger park there. More, more than more than anything else. I think that'd be a great, a great idea. Uh, one question. Yeah, I'm sorry, I can't get out. Just one brief question: Is the is the site clean at this point? Adequately clean for whatever development you want to? Uh, yeah, you know? it's, it's more complicated than that. But um, <laughs> suffice it to say that, that one of the advantages of a scheme like this is that you can cap the site, have a slab, or before you get to another slab before residential development occurs. So. In an initial assessment of mass development and the environmental people, um, this would work as a residential site because it's not right down on the, the ground where the contaminants are. So kind of answering two questions at once. And it's suitable for parking. It's so suitable for parking. I have a quick question. Are the parking requirements cast in stone? I mean, that, that's What's that? the parking requirements, 182 spaces. Yeah, yeah so are those, let me, is that let me a, just, a law, a constitutional law? No, it was just a place to start an analysis. It is let, let, let me yeah, make sure that we understand that the uh, initial, that the city council, when it, uh, it surplused the land, and had uh, specifications to it. And one of them was that, I believe, that the parking, uh, that, that the parking would remain there in that loss. Uh, or, yeah, or that there wouldn't be a loss of parking. So the city council could, in theory, revisit that. Uh, but the mayor is working, the mayor is asked, and mass development are working within the current legislative uh, framework. Can I have, is there any other public comment that, uh, that we got? Uh, sir? Ladies and gentlemen, you could. I'm, yeah, I'm David Pursuit, and I'm one of the ones that came to town in the late 70s and early 80s and began the rebuilding of this downtown. Um, I've done the Sweeties building, former Daily Hampshire Gazette, and along the way I have a city block in Ohio. So I've done a bit along the way myself. I'm not here to tout myself, though. I'm here to remind some of you who have seen the local newspapers that late, way last January, I began to think about this issue as a way to give back to this town that's been so very good to me. I'm feeling so tremendously lucky to have, have, to have had spent 30 years here uh, running my consulting business and, and having a wonderful time meeting a number of people, including some of you. Uh, this uh, project, as I envisioned it last, last January, would indeed uh, continue Alaska Park. Uh, would indeed create another park on the same level as Pulaski Park, 
accessible as an inner courtyard of the building built something like the large residences in New York City, which take a whole city block, uh, and then have a private courtyard. In this case, with public money, it wouldn't necessarily be a private courtyard. But I do feel that given our financial position in this city at this time, given our need, our real need, for ways to improve that financial position with schooling, having trouble, you all read what this man, our mayor, is going through every week. It is time, as part of the solution to this problem, to seriously consider the fact that people of means, that people retiring, want to return to downtown. And if there is any way for us to improve our financial position as well as improve our social position, it is to do exactly that. I, uh, I have uh, uh, put together a presentation which is probably a bit inappropriate for this evening. I did a, 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 a PowerPoint presentation with some drawings of some computer models. The people, the engineers who work with me, uh, construct computer models of buildings routinely. So, but I don't think that's appropriate for this meeting. I would like instead to suggest that at the next meeting we have, that we perhaps get more into those issues, if indeed it makes sense to do so. I thank you for your time. Very nice. Uh, uh, so we're going to, if there isn't anyone who hasn't spoken, we're, we're going to take quick comments from those who have, if they still want to say anything. Any? I have a quick question. Oh. Okay, so we're, yeah, we're, we're coming back. We've, 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 lapped, we've lapped everybody now, so uh, now we're out. <coughs> what do you envision happening in the space between those two buildings? Here? Yeah. We, we didn't draw it yet. No, no, well, I mean, no, you have two buildings, and then you have a blank space. Here, green space. That green space. Is that green space? So it's public green space. So, if I look, if I show you the other way, but you have a big public green space in the form of Pulaski Park, so how would it function differently? It would have right. different character. It, it, it would be publicly accessible, but it would be it would be the address of those two buildings. In other words, this this residential lobby really faces this way and into the yard. And to get to this one, you'd have to walk through that space. That makes sense. I, I, I'm just wondering why you know the idea of pushing it all back, keeping it one building, and having because you already have addresses on each side of the building. Right. So do you really need, I mean, it looks like that could become one of those barren windswept plazas that we I think, I think would be, be, would be in the, um, it would be in the, uh, that creates along with the existing apartment building a new little neighborhood, and it would be in the best interest of all three of those buildings. We should have drawn the existing apartment building with the same red color to make it clear. We're envisioning those three buildings working together very much along the lines of your comments that those all face into a, a, a public space in the, in, in the inside of the block. It would be like a courtyard. It would be like a courtyard, right. Yeah. That's what they yeah. have the name. Just some quick points. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that from what we've been here tonight, it seems like there's a very strong idea public, from the public to expand this beyond just a building on that spot. And that it could be, should be looked at wider. Jack asked what the limits of the property. I mean, there's limits of the property, but there's what's going on around it that's actually more important. So the next point is tax revenue was raised. Well, if you improve the city and you make this a city that people want to come to, all the tax revenue will rise. So you don't just try and suck it out of one little piece of property. And that's one point. Another point is if Route 56 is brought through here, it'll improve the site, you can get 65 parking spaces let me, let me along the river. <laughs> so there's 65 more spaces as you improve the access through and you improve the Smith campus as well. And the last point is the apartment building, the owners here, the lower level is almost two and a half stories of a very blank basement wall that does nothing. That could be actually shops, small shops. In the Heart of Northampton site plan, we showed the small shops there. The roof could be green. It could be a backyard to the apartments that go from there on up. So, I mean, the point is, the, the, the way this should be looked at is not just the property, but everything that's going on around it. Other, yeah. Uh, quick question on the pro forma. What was, uh, did you guys look at the minimum sort of number of residential units that would be sort of the tipping point where the well, it's, would it's right it around 40. I mean, 40. And does that represent 40? Is it's that 40, 44, 45 units. Okay. I thought you were talking about 60. That was in the, in the long tail L shaped okay. scheme, right. which um, did seem appropriate from a massing standpoint. Um, the, the first scheme that I showed, 36 units. 
um, wasn't getting near to any kinds of numbers that were working. So was that, was that factoring in the sort of public-private partnership that you were talking about? Not yet, working? not yet, and I, I think that you know, this is even marginal, so private partnership. there's more research that has to be done about how we finance this game, but, but definitely below 45 units, um, it gets pretty far from reality. Um, which is one of the reasons why after we did the first game, we realized we had to go hunting for more units to get into a ballpark where we could start to play with different financing sources. Great. Um, let's go back to the community fire slide. Yeah. So a point I, I didn't bring up, yeah. Um, that arc of the riverbed um, sort of in, heads off into a, a, a wall on, on that slide. In actual fact, that currently is, is the, the bike path and the terminal. I know, this is a, we ran out of digital model funding. Quite, quite <laughs> 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 we understand. Not, not, um, um, so that, that, that currently heads off and, and ends uh, in south, at the Southampton line. Right. But it is part of a, a bike trail. Absolutely. Bike trail that we've yeah. You know, and and been on it, and it would it will be a lovely bike trail within we finish within the next five to ten yeah. years that will make Northampton the northern terminus of a, of a trail that goes all the way to New Haven. So that's oh, going to bring right. in right. a a level of visitors uh, <coughs> and, and, and enthusiasts to Northampton that we don't currently have. But I just want to make sure that whatever is planned there, that the bike trail, because <coughs> in a sense, this is the entry to Northampton. For people who will be coming up all from somewhere in Connecticut. Yeah, it's, um, it's, a, it's a, it's a, you know, as we think about, you know, how so we, it, it developers, should, we think that if, if you are a bike person, you want to live here. It will be a, a closed, yes. secure, well-lit bike parking. You know, there will be one parking space with three park bike, bike spaces for every, you know, this, is our, <laughs> this is our strategy right. for this game. Yeah. <laughs> question? Yes, uh, a question and a brief comment. The question is, what's the next step? What's the time frame? Uh, uh, how is this process going to go forward? And, and the comment is, I hope that you won't accept just anything in order to get it done. There's got to be some kind of balance between doing what needs to get done now and doing it right. And I hope you'll think hard about what that balance is. Thank you. So uh, next, as far as next step, I can't speak. I really, actually, can't speak for the um, for the committee. First of all, I'm not the chair. I'm just standing in for the chair tonight. Uh, and um, but I do believe that we're going to have. A, this is the this has been the first um, rollout of what Utile has been working on at UTL, excuse me. And they're going to continue to work uh, based on the feedback from tonight and uh, and, in, and in talks with the mayor and mass development. I do think. I, we should hear from the committee members. I do think we'll, we probably will have another event uh, for the public. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure when. Could be. Could be later this month or next month. Uh, we've been working with the mayor on this, and again, I'm not the chair, but I do think that we will have another event uh, similar to this, uh, which actually, which could, which could be less structured um, than than this. It depends on sort of where the committee goes. I think from here. Do we have a comment? Yeah, I think what's very clear is that this is a community conversation. That we, we've heard a lot of interesting ideas for it, but we need to have a framework for the conversation. And that's what the work of UTL with the grant through mass development mm -hmm. has done. It's given us a starting point. We're not under the gun to develop it. It doesn't have to be where we have to enter into an RFP within 60 days and all that. We want to do this right. There's no rush to it. So let's bring together, hopefully with this committee and others, like the work that's gone into it, so that we come up with a comprehensive plan for downtown. Because we don't want to be in a situation like the city of Boston where they're contemplating, you know, tearing up, is it the government center or city hall? They're, they're looking at the vast wasteland of, of that concrete. We want to do it right. We want it to be comprehensive. We want it to be open because it is a jewel, as someone described it. There are financial considerations. So if it is kept open to the public and not developed, there's maintenance that needs to go into that. We had a challenge with the overhead, so that's a consideration that needs to be made. What goes in there? If it is residential, if it is a public-private partnership, there are going to be considerations 
perhaps in the form of tax increment financing, perhaps there is an affordable housing component. Those are ideas that we can add in to the framework for the RFP, but those to Tim's point, we don't want it to be where we get so focused on the small details that it becomes unviable and no one develops it. And that undeveloped spot, whether it is for public or for private or a combination thereof, sits fallow. No one wants that. We want it to be improved. We have different ideas of how it can be improved, but this is a conversation. Any other comments? Thank you. So I think that the, the one last piece of this is that is that we we need to come up with, I'm speaking about our role in mass development to recommend to the mayor and this committee whether there is a viable development option for the site, even with the level of um, even with the burden we put on the development proposal you've, you've shown. And if we recommend to the mayor, probably actually it, it's very marginal in terms of penciling out. There's a different decision you have to make, which is that rather than, this might not be a part of the toolkit at all, you know, that, that, that for the foreseeable future, one outcome of the work that we've done is that you have to do schemes before you can measure them to know if they're viable or not, by the way. You can't, you have to, get the figures there to do the analysis, um, is that if development to get up out of the ground, to be at level of Pulaski Park isn't feasible, we probably need to be a different kind of conversation, okay, what do we do? Do we, do we live with the parking lot? Do we make more modest public improvements for a better vertical connection? What are the avenues for that? So um, I think that we want to be very clear with you, actually, if that's part of your toolkit or not the thing that you see on the screen. Because it is part of your toolkit if it works, because it does provide some subsidy fund financing for everything that you want to have. Um, I just wanted to be clear about that so, as well. So uh, 